Hi guys, Dave Stonehouse with the British Columbia School of Log Building. We're here in the log yard where we just recently set up this beautiful 1939 hand-hewn dovetail log house. Today in this video we want to take a quick tour, look at some of the special features and get a little history lesson on log house building. Let's start by taking a look at the corner notches as that's what defines the type of building that it is. This is a dovetail building, very well crafted. The builder of this particular house came from Germany and came with these skills and it's uh, very obvious that this was not his first dovetail house. If we look at from the bottom log up to the top of the wall we can see that the tails are very well fitted. Now if we look at the tails themselves we see that this is a compound dovetail or a full dovetail which means that it has both a, a slope on the top face of the tail as well as the lower face that slopes into the building. These particular tails have quite a slight slope to them, but some of the angles are more visible on certain tails, lower angle there. One thing that's fun about looking at these old buildings is trying to imagine just how they created the joints, what tools they used, what the seams look like. We have a couple of uh, telltales here that tells us that they definitely used a cross-cut saw to cut the shoulders and then they would have used a combination of an ax and a chisel to shape the top faces. But here we can clearly see, because of a little bit of an overcut, the kerf from the crosscut saw. We've had some buildings where the shoulders were actually cut by ax as well, so they were significantly more uh, jagged and a rugged fit. But we've got a nice tight fit, but we've got clearly the ghosts, ghosts of the saw's past. One of the unique features about this building before we go inside is just the fact that it's an L-shaped building. So it gives us this uh, inset, which adds a nice feature and it also gives us an interior corner that we can go and take a look at. Let's take a look at this inside corner. As I mentioned out there with the L-shape of the building, it makes for a nice feature because we have the exposed ends of the notches shown on the interior. Now this style of notch that they've used is interesting. They've got, uh, they've left about three inches of overhang past the edge of the tail. That leads me to believe that this wall was probably longer at one time and this cut was just done during a, a later renovation. Uh, otherwise they most likely would have just done flush cut tails to match the tails from the exterior. This building was built approximately 80 years ago in 1939. It's built with hand-hewn spruce, which was the local wood from the area that this building came from. If we take a look at the logs, we can clearly still see all the original hand-hewing marks from the uh, broad axe from years ago, as well as some the smaller vertical cuts were scoring marks that were used to sever the fibers and then the bigger broad axe would have come in and uh, taken that piece off. If we can compare some of the logs and the finish on them. We see this nice smooth log and we see another log like this is a great contrast how it's quite rugged. It's got lots of big fish scales on it. That probably tells us one of two things. Either this was hewn by the master, this was hewn by the apprentice, or this was just a really ornery log with some uh, non-cooperating grain. Every lo log does behave differently for sure. We're talking hand-hewn logs. This is the type of ax that would have been used to shape all these logs. We can see, uh, let's find a good example here. We can see by some of the huge strokes that we know that we would have been using an ax with a large face on it. This is about a 12 inch cutting face on this ax. You can see that we've got a stroke that's completely across the width of that log, which is about nine inches. So we know, we know that they were using a, a large ax like this to do this. So if we keep taking our tour here, one other quite interesting thing about this building, and I can't explain to you why it is, but there's about three pieces in this building that are actually sawn instead of hewn. Now I did get some information that the builder of this building had worked in the uh, kind of the early sawmill industry in Alberta. So he must have had 
uh, connection to at least three pieces of sawn timber and the rest he hand hewed. These are quite small logs. We've got uh, uh, 15 rounds to get us up to our approximately 10 foot 10 wall height. Um, this is what was available to them. This is what they use. But we typically uh, see buildings with quite a bit bigger logs. This is a uh, piece of eastern hemlock out of a log building that we brought from Ontario and as you can see it's approximately two to one in size of these logs but I'm a big believer in using what's available to you and starting with uh, the the materials that they had they built just I think an amazing uh, structure and an amazing piece of history that we're excited to be able to help save. There's over 150 different pieces of log that come together to form this log shell and the combination of the notches in the corners as well as a lot of hand carved pegs uh, is used to tie all the, the individual logs together. So some of these pegs were taken out during the disassembly when we reset up the building on its final foundation we'll uh, reinstall the pegs we make some pegs if we need to. You can clearly see here one of the pegs visible tying the short island pieces together which are the short blocks in between the two windows. This house had a full upper floor in it. The stairs originally ran up through this corridor. There's a wider spacing between the first uh, floor joist and the wall to allow for the stairs. As you can see the floor joists to the upper floor are smaller hand-hewn logs. There was originally a wall that ran through here, which would have been added some uh, bearing support to the small floor joists. Um, I find it interesting that with this mid-span wall in here, there was still definitely a, a longer span on this side of the wall. And I think it's neat to notice that they were aware of that and put all the butt ends of the logs on this side so that they had a little bit more meat in the floor joists where the span was longer. It's an interesting time period that this building was built because 1939 would be considered very late for this type of construction, hand-hewn log home. Most things would have been on to sawmill and uh, sawn, sawn material for the build. So we're kind of in a mid-period mid where they're starting to use some mix of modern building techniques. So these uh, floor joists are actually 24 inches on center. So every two feet, which would be a typical uh, code type detail nowadays. So the logs are small, but there's lots of them. Oftentimes we would have seen bigger, more larger timber joists, but they would have been spread out three or four feet in size. So. It's all, all part of the fun to try and uh, chase back some of the history and try and have an idea of how they were doing and what they were doing. So if you want to learn more about uh, log home history, modern log home te techniques, subscribe to our YouTube channel, uh, British Columbia School of Log Building. We're always teaching log building courses both on site here in beautiful British Columbia where it's snowing and as well as uh, our online courses as well. Check us out. Thanks.